started out my travels in Macedonia by meeting a group of Norwegians on a study trip. What was going to be a one-day stop in Skopje turned into four days tagging along with their group, learning from the local context. The first day, the guys visited a Roma ghetto in kindergarten. Skopje has the largest Roma population in Europe at 40,000. The girls marry at 15 to 16, have lots of kids, and remain illiterate and poor. With no appreciation or understanding of education, the parents do little for their children to be educated, creating a cycle of poverty. The parents send their kids to the kindergarten we visited in exchange for food equivalent to the amount of money the children would make begging. At the kindergarten, the kids learn the basics, receive healthy food, and learn discipline. They go on to be the best students in schools. Skopje is divided into Roma, Albanian, and Macedonian sections. An NGO worker took us through the different areas and walked us through the bazaar. The city sections have European and Turkish influences. It's possible to get cheap food from kebab shops here. A meal for five to six people costs around 11 euro. Ordering in sit-down restaurants costs more and is a bit confusing since the price is by kilogram, but it doesn't say what the serving size is. Officials decided to make Skopje the city of statues. There are so many of them crammed along bridges, buildings, and public squares, they don't really stand out and draw attention to the individuals they represent. It does give the city a unique character for tourists though. They have the largest statue of Alexander the Great in the world, and it is part of an effort by the government to claim Alexander the Great as Macedonian and not Greek. The official English webpage of the statue describes it as a patriotic inspiration, evoking shouts, songs, and tears of joy when it was unveiled. However, what the locals told me is that they are not happy about the millions squandered on the ginormous statue. All the statues and renovations in the city cost perhaps as much as half a billion euros. This is in a country where average salaries can range from a few hundred to a thousand dollars a month. At least from a tourist viewpoint, the statue does look quite grand and creates an anchor point for building up a beautiful look for the city, and it will help generate some tourism. Like many countries in the Balkans, Macedonia also has something dedicated to Mother Teresa, a small museum with a beautiful chapel. We sat in there for a peaceful and quiet moment. I spent most of my time in Skopje, but I did make a short excursion to Matka Canyon, a short ways out of the city with a beautiful river where we received an impromptu walkthrough of the riverside house of a retired rock star, Yakov Drankowski, who was also a successful sculptor in his later years. I couldn't find much information about him online, but I believe he was big back in the Yugoslavian era. His house also doubles as a studio, and it was fun to walk through it and see the creative design he made for the place. While the guys visited the Roma kindergarten, the girls in the group helped out at a women's center, where one of the local workers offered us free tickets to a professional handball game. Honestly, I thought of handball as more of a kid's gym class activity, but in former Soviet countries, it's a very popular sport. It actually has a lot of action to it, and I had fun watching. I probably won't watch on TV, but it's fun to watch live if you get the chance. I enjoyed my extended stay in Macedonia. The highlights came down to the people I met, like the Norwegians, the Australian NGO worker, an ethnic Albanian who serenaded us with a guitar at a local restaurant, and friendly locals inviting us to special events.